I guess before we start the like meeting proper, um, I think I'm going to get through a lot of what's left today. Um, so I've got this list, it's got a lot of things on it, but like there isn't much to say about a lot of them. So we'll see if we actually get through them all. And then that'll leave just this handful of leftovers for uh, the last or the following week. And then I've started a conversation over in the uh, Slack channel of, you know, do we want to just keep going? Do we want to do another another package? Um, and I think what I want to do is um, kind of fork the idea. I, I think the idea works. I think it is, you know, interesting to go through the docs. And so uh, we'll make one that is more kind of focused on the tidyverse and have you know a group that's going through all the docs of the tidyverse and i would want to continue this one as we've kind of you know focused on package development kind of stuff so use this probably go to dev tools uh roxygen things like that and so just i wanted to bring up that uh we have a couple of weeks to decide but we should decide which package everyone's most interested in next in this family and i'll put up a whole probably um but yeah if it's okay with everyone i'd like to just keep this time slot and keep going um and we'll see how that works out um but yeah so with that uh i let's see i will try to get started those extra windows and, uh yes <laughs> Uh, that's, you know, that's just for this. This is just one set of tabs. <laughs> that is crazy. That's <laughs> just the tabs for just this. So I wanted to have it. And actually, I'm not even sure if it'll turn out to be useful to do it this way, because I opened them all up and I sorted out what I was going to look at. And then looking at it again, I'm like, oh, I just actually I want to go a slightly different order. So, um, yeah, we'll we'll have a poll in the channel. Um, I'll put that up probably right after this, and then we'll decide what's going next. Well, I think DevTools is a strong contender, but Roxygen would be pretty cool. Package Down is a small package, so we could probably knock that one out. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll talk about the ideas anyway. All right. So yeah, today I'm going to try to go through um, things related to package development that we haven't hit in the previous couple of weeks. Um, and some of these I think we did touch on, but not really uh, go into in full or as full as I'd like to. Um, and we'll see if we make it all the way through this list that I have. If not, then no big deal. We'll do them next week. All right. So the first ones, and actually, um, I think I'm going to just go through like the tabs I have open. Um, I don't want to keep scanning back and forth between things. And so we'll see. We'll see how this works out. Uh, I also, at some point, will swap over to, um, if I can get it open, yeah, okay, I have it handy. The package that I wrote that is kind of my personal extension to use this, uh, which basically has, I don't know, two or three functions in it now that are basically just for create packages and do all the things that I want, kind of like the create tidy package, um, but personalized for me. So hopefully we'll go look at that. All right, so the first thing I wanted to touch on is there are these um, activating project functions. So in use this, everything or almost everything that it does is relevant or relative to the packet or the project that is active. And so it has these functions of uh, proj proj get of what is the active project, proj set to set the active project. Um, Proj path, which is just a helper that will, uh, you can, it's kind of like the package here that it'll, it, whatever you put in the dots, it, um, you know, it'll do a directory structure within the current project. So it's relative to the current project. It's almost exactly the same as here. Um, with project is, uh, there's the package with R that, or with her, that lets you run like one call as if something were true in your environment. And so with this with project 
function is that idea where you say, um, I'm going to set my project, my active project to be this other project. You know, normally you probably wouldn't do the one that you're in, or maybe you would, you know, set work in directory in order to do this, have some code that you want to run and it'll run as if it's in that project and then come back to the project that you're in uh, before that. Um, this one, I haven't used it yet, but I do use the next one where um, it's useful if you are setting up a function that does a bunch of things, you could do it within the context of a different project. Or if you're, and if you're doing it with a bunch of things, local project is equivalent to that, that it'll set the project with, so if you call it within a function, as long as you're still within that function, that project is active. And then when you leave the function, it goes back to whatever you're in. So again, that one's useful. I use this within my, um, my wrapper uh, or my, yeah, my, my create package uh, wrapper. Um, and so, you, the create tidy package also uses this. Go ahead, Ethan. Um, so is that useful like for testing if stuff you wanna do with a project, like for testing project setup, like local uh, run your setup, see if it did what you want or? The main thing that it's useful for is let's say, so I have my my function that is create project or create package that mm -hmm. um, like replaces the use this create package and does a bunch of steps. So it creates, um, you know, creates a directory with a package in it. And then it calls this local project so that everything else it calls is within that directory without having to screw up where I'm working when I create the package. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And then, so then uh, at the end, it loads the package in a, or loads that project in a new instance of our studio, okay. um, but keeps the one that I called it from however it was. It doesn't mess with that one's project state. Mm. Does that make sense? Yep. So it, it can actually like persist the, the local project. If yes. You, like if you create it and start it up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. So it's, it's yeah, the, the local part is local to this function, set the active project to be this. Okay. It's, um, so it's, it's like proj set, but it only does it for the, the length of time that that function is uh, executing. Mm -hmm. And then similarly with project, it's uh, proj set, but only for this one call. Like so, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Cool. Um, I can't remember. I don't think, yeah, there's nothing else that's really uh, particularly interesting within this. So that's that set of functions. Um, another one that we didn't really get to around uh, projects is there's this project sit rep that just tells you um, like what's active. Um, I, I like the fact that there's another sit rep Function. So there's the um, git sit rep that'll tell you everything about your git setup and make sure, you know, tell you what to fix and that kind of thing. Um, likewise, this one kind of tells you uh, what's going on it, and it tells you, you know, there's currently no active use of this project. You might want to do that. You might want to um, deal with that. Um, and so uh, just another, just utility function. If something's going weird in your session, you can run project sit rep and go, oh, okay, I, for whatever reason, it doesn't see this thing that I'm in as a project or that kind of thing. John, basic yep. question. I don't yep. fully understand what <laughs> what uh, use this project is though. Yeah, so um, for the most part, and let's see, do I have it? Uh, it's in here. Um, so, um, most darn it, I can't find the, the quick, uh, description, but there's, so mostly it's an RStudio project, but if you're not in, if, so if you, if you're in an RStudio project, you'll have a something.proj file and so if it sees that it says okay that's the that's the project i'll activate that where i am um so you know it looks at the path dot which is the path that you're in right now uh but if it doesn't find that it'll look for oh here we go Duh, it's right here 
Um, it looks for a dot here file, an RStudio project, a package description, um, a, a dot git folder, okay. remake.yaml oh. file, or a dot project uh, projectile file. So it looks for any of those kind of within the directory structure that you're in and so says, it's okay. It's a full definition of like, you're working here. Yes. But they may or may not be within an RStudio project officially. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, and so the idea of the sit rep of them being in conflict, that sounds pretty problematic, so, but I really only work within projects these days. So hopefully yeah. that will happen. Yeah. I think it's mostly useful for um, like anything historical that you're working okay. in. Okay. And, yeah. you know, and it, let's say you had. Uh, um, so you can use a dot here file to say, okay, this is the root of my project. But if you have dot here in one place and the dot r proj in another place, uh, the sit rep would tell you which one it's actually going to use and uh, okay. that kind of thing. All right, thanks. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, one situation where I could imagine getting into this is there are GitHub repositories that are multiple packages, and so depending how you check things out, it might treat the whole thing as a project or it might treat each package as a project. And so that would be where it's helpful to explicitly set it or at least to have get or sit, yeah, use this, tell you, this is what I think the project is. Um, but in most, like in almost anything you do, uh, normal uses, you shouldn't have to worry about these things. And it, and it uh, you know, tells you, um, down here somewhere it tells you uh yeah you probably shouldn't yeah have yeah, to do, deal with this yeah. yeah um but again unless um uh uh use in packages that extend use this so if you're making your own personal little use this wrapper these are things you would need um all right uh project activate is you know uh similar to that that it just uh gets it all activated um it app opens a new r studio session and uh sets the thing that you're working in, or you know the path that you give it as the active project again most of the time not a thing that you'll need to call um but this is something that's i think this is the last step of my create package uh function and we'll <laughs> check that in a minute uh, anything else on that all right, uh, this is the index again, so I don't need that. All right, um, the rest of these are very much just grab bag. And so we'll go through them um, relatively quickly. <laughs> this one, it's funny because I, I set up my package of, um, you know, okay, this is all the things I wanna do. I based on the tidyverse list of things or whatever. And then I started reading through, okay, what haven't we covered? And so I, wait, what's this use spell check? which sets up a test um, and and um, like the infrastructure to automatically run spell checks on your package. And so I actually haven't added this yet. Maybe we'll do this at the end of this uh, meeting that, well, I wanna do that too. So in my package, I'm gonna set this up where it just automatically uh, runs the spell check. And it adds this file word list uh, in the package and it properly ignores it for building and everything like that. And then if you have anything in your package that it keeps flagging as a spelling error, you can put that into the word list and it won't spell it or it won't flag it anymore. Um, you can set specific language for it. You can tell it not to error um, or whether it's going to actually like to count as a test error. Um, It, which is the way you generally want to go because it tells you th this might be a problem, but it doesn't break your package. So it wouldn't like stop it from working on CRAN and things like that. All right. Uh, so there's use citation. Um, actually, I'll, uh, let's see. Let me get something set up real quick to um, just show. This one, it, it just, so uh, by default, there there's like a structure that, uh, R can use to figure out how to cite a package. Um, and then this use citation function is add a thing to my package 
to kind of override that default. And so in a moment, I will get mine open and then I will um, share that the proper screen so you can see. Oops. Um, right. In theory. Okay, I'll come back over here and say stop sharing. And then I will switch to sharing just the whole screen. Okay, so um, this is my R Studio. Um, I thought I could zoom with that, but apparently not. Okay, um, so there's, I think it's just citation. Um, I thought it did the, oh, oh yeah, citation. And then you can say what package. So I can say, and this, um, and it automatically grabs stuff from the description to build that. Or I could say, uh, use citation. Um, oh, and so it's gonna it throws this error because here let me let me do a normal like a package that I actually installed from um, Cran. It will have a date in the description file because that's the date that it was um, accepted on Cran in that version. And this is just local, and so there's no date in the description, um, and so that's what this warning was about and why it's got these question marks. But so a normal package, well. <laughs> And the or dplyr was a bad one to use as an example because dplyr actually has a citation set up where it has a paper that it's citing. Um, I'm trying, you know, let me just do random uh, citation a bind. Is that one? That one also has an actual <laughs> citation. Um, I can do cookies. I know that one doesn't. That one is. Oh, I have a local copy installed, but. Anyway, most you know, uh, if you don't have a citation set up, it'll just do this format. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, this one is a normal one because it's just citing CRAN as the publishing source versus dplyr has, uh, oh, that is actually just citing the thing. I thought they had a paper that it cited. Huh, maybe not. Anyway, but if you do use citation, um, it creates this citation file in inst slash citation um, and uh, sets it up where you can put in whatever you want to say. So you can tell it what journal to go to, uh, what the URL is, what pages to look at, you know, all the citation setup. Um, I, I could have sworn that dplyr had the real one. Um, I wonder if I have a, do I have a dev version installed? Uh, I do not. So I don't know. I thought thought it did. Um, but yeah, there are uh, different ones that will have an actual journal citation as the citation. I'm curious, actually. I wonder if um, <laughs> use this. Uh, no, it's just the the normal setup. So the re the way that I can see that it's the normal. Um, like default citation is it's just using the description. It's getting the list of authors um, and it's, you know, gets the year from, uh, there's a date field there, date slash publication. So it's using that for the date, et cetera. And it just, most of the, the easiest thing to see is it links to CRAN. Um, all right, any questions about the uh, citation? All right, next. So yeah, this one I am not going to go into in full detail because LearnR is its own package and it's one that we might go into at some point. But so there is this package LearnR, um, which is relatively new. And I haven't seen um, much that uses it yet, or at least I haven't dug in and found it. Um, but the idea is instead of just, uh, so the kind of levels of documentation are you have the normal docs that you make with Roxygen, 
um, and that's you know generally per uh, function within a package. And then you can write a vignette, which is like showing how to do something more overall within a package. And then there's learn our tutorials, which like actually are interactive and you can have questions within them um, and kind of like grade how the user does on the questions. Um, you know, as you can see here that they link off to the learn our documentation and it's its whole own package um, and it's a whole thing. I think this is really interesting um, and I like want to get to know it better, but it is its whole, like it's got its whole thing going. So I think for this particular, you know, for the use this group, this exists and you can do it and you can then go learn more about it, but use this will help you do that. Um, anyone have any qu questions or comments before we move on? Okay. John, really one quick one. I, I like, yep. do, do you know off the head, or off the top of your head, um, any packages that actually use this uh, as part of the package to distribute it? I don't, but let's see. So we can do uh, the way to find that out is reverse imports. Okay. Yeah. Probably reverse suggests since it's. Um, the way it's set up. But anyway, I so not like almost nothing on CRAN uses it yet. Um, and I haven't dug in enough to know like when would it be appropriate. Uh, but I like I say, I really like the idea. I have seen it um, like the some of the examples, but I've never dug into it and really used it. I, I think um, most likely it's used more often uh outside of packages like because i know you can use it for like actual um course websites and things like that so um yeah but yeah you can put exercises and quizzes within uh r and r packages um and actually you know if you want to learn more about and see more examples the learn r uh, package on site does have some examples. Um, I don't know if they are. Yeah, I think they're all within LearnR. I don't know if it has links out to examples. Um, so it doesn't uh, look like it does. But yeah, so it has all kinds of info about, and actually it's got even more than what's in the, the notes there. So um, Someday that will be one that I learned for sure. I've got the sticker. So, <laughs> um, oh, and okay, there's a uh, a link in the chat for the Epper Mapper uh, project. Very cool. Um, all right. Next up, there is the uh, use uh, test coverage or the test coverage functions. Um, this is part of what I have built in to my uh, massive create pa package function. What this does is um, adds like reporting of what percent of the code has a test that runs that code. Um, and there's this, there are these sites, CodeCov and Coveralls. I always just use CodeCov because it's first. Um, I don't really know what the difference is between them. Um, and it'll add, let's see, if we go to actually just stay here, uh, they don't have coverage. Okay. Um, if we go to cookies, uh, let's do cranes and cookies. Um, so my cookies package has hundred percent code coverage and it has this little badge and that's basically what is being set up by uh, that function call is um, it adds the badge to the um, readme and it sets up um, the uh, uh, GitHub actions that are needed in order to report that coverage. Um, and then the other piece use cover ignore is to you can give it files that don't count. Um, 
Oh, that's right. This was something that I wanted to uh, point out from this help is in a few places, she says um, file globs. And uh, just in case you don't know, that is the style of file name where asterisk means a wild card. It's basically what a file glob means um, as opposed to like file regexes, I guess. Um, I, I just, that was one of those where I was like, wait, do, does that explicitly mean that? And I had to, or I went off and Googled and went on a whole thing of, okay, yeah, I guess that is technically a term, but not something that necessarily everyone knows. So, um, all right, any, any other thoughts on that? Uh, I'm a big fan of um, like reporting in order to keep myself uh, honest on it that, uh, like if we look at, uh, I've got um, Chinese Slack, which isn't cran ready yet. And it doesn't have a badge because I I have really crappy tests on this one yet. And so I like, they go hand in hand. It, I need to add the badge to it to get myself to add tests or more complete tests. All right. So, so this next- for the, oh, the code coverage, uh, does, does, that, does that just come from, um... So does it come from an external service via GitHub Actions, or does it come from the like DevTools itself? Because I, I guess I think there's a DevTools way to report on code coverage, or at least some. I seem to remember some tools that give like an overall, and then kind of like by file or function. It's yes. So it's a little of both. Um, let's see. Is it? It's in that. Um, so. Uh, this calls, so there is, the cover package is what DevTools, uh, works with to tell you code coverage. Um, but the saving of the coverage is what CodeCov, uh, takes care of for you basically. Okay. Got it. Thanks. And so it, that, yeah, that function will report to, to code, uh, CodeCov your percent. And I think, you know, it has like a whole. Uh, report of um, if it isn't right, it'll tell you uh, what's you know what's missing if it's not a hundred percent. And it, yeah, so that's that's that. And like I said, coveralls probably has a slightly different report, and I don't know. I've never uh, CodeCup has done everything I've wanted, so I've never gone to see uh, what the difference is. All right, uh, this next set of functions is we've touched on a little bit, but just there are a bunch of these edit um, functions. I I use edit R profile and edit R and Byron a fair amount because then you don't have to remember where these files are. Um, it just finds them and opens them. Uh, one of these days I should probably find out, I, I know that there are some things that you should, or that if you set them in make vars, uh, make vars are, the things that get called when you are building a package from source. Um, and there are things you can do here to make the reporting uh, less noisy, basically, as it's building the package. So I, one of these days I need to do that. Um, or, um, yeah, I guess it's just a one-time thing. I was going to say, like, I wish there was a function that was just like set up your make vars the way that we recommend. Um, maybe someday that'll be there. You can edit your git config. Um, you can edit your git ignore for a given. Um, it, so global, uh, this is the global git ignore, right? Um, you can edit the package on config, edit our studio snippets, which uh, is relevant to what we were talking about before. I, I'm not going to call this one as a demo because I had to go like dig it up that it tells you um, if you have this file, which it creates when you tell it to edit it, that overrides the RStudio built-in stuff. And so until I'm ready to really dig into that, I don't want to create that file. Um, but that is something that we can do. And we had talked a little bit about that uh, last week or the week before. And then edit RStudio prefs. Um, actually, that one I'm going to go ahead and do because it's just interesting that there's this file that has... You know, it's the equivalent of all the stuff that's in the settings. They're all within this file. Um, and so if there's something that you want to set 
particularly, you can do it directly through there. And yeah, I think that's it on that. It's just, again, the, the thing I really like about it is, you know, I've got used this um, loaded. And so I can just type edit and don't have to remember like, uh, what is it? Oh, it's our environment. And so, or a lot of times I just do like, um, actually I, I often will do something like that. If you can't remember the exact function, you just uh, can get it to look within use this. And I knew it was something like that. Um, and yeah, uh, Arthur has some Porto snippets in the chat. So um, yeah, there are definitely, there are things out there uh, of these um, our studio snippets. You can do them in um, like pretty much every language, which is nice. Um, that's actually interesting because uh, I, I assume that there is a separate file for Quarto, which our, um, use this doesn't directly let you edit yet. So um, interesting to see. John, one question about usage, if, if I could, um, just kind of in what you've seen, and I guess others, uh, definitely others as well, is um, are, are these principally used interactively, or have you seen any cases in which they're called within a function? So, like, for example, I'm thinking, like, one way one might be able to edit, you know, edit snippets or something like that is maybe by calling this function, uh, but i would also seen, I think, at the... the mm -hmm. The shiny snippets package, they're just kind of like appending, appending text to an existing file, you know, a file if it exists, appending, you know, some some packaged uh, snippet text to it. These functions just open the file for editing and create it if it doesn't exist. Um, so you, you would only want to use these interactively. I was saying that I was kind of pausing. I can't think of a reason that you would ever want to use it not interactively, and I'm guessing um uh that it probably somewhere it's yeah is interactive so it's um it's checking whether it's interactive and if it's not all it's really going to do is create the directory got it um, cool. yeah um yeah i was so i i was looking at that for snippets like this doesn't have the infrastructure to actually add something to a snippet, but you could look at the code for it and that could help you like figure out how to do that. There are other, um, I can't remember if I have them open here, but there are file editing functions within use this that aren't like directly documented, but they are exported so you can use them. Um, and I, when we go to my, uh, my my package looking through the source i've got some of that because there were cases where like the use this call um will do something that isn't quite what i want and so i learned to use use this to uh kind of more directly make some edits uh into files all right um this next wave of ones i think or at least within this uh there are just a bunch that are you know, use CPP 11, which will just set up the infrastructure that you need to use the package CPP 11 within your R package. Um, again, if you need to use, actually use the function or use the package, that's its own whole other thing. Uh, it has pretty good documentation, but it is a whole separate package that uh, one of these days I want to uh, learn enough C++ to make it worthwhile to do that. Um, use make uh, sets up a make file for your project. Um, that's a whole other type of thing, like, and that's for like building um, uh, things in uh, Linux, basically. And so, um, this th that's a whole separate thing that I'm not going to go into details about, but it's there if you need to use it. Um, Targets was originally, it grew out of a thing that was based on make. So that whole, it's the process, it's the idea of having a file that um, 
has the list of things that it needs to do and it has like rules to figure out if things have already been done so it doesn't have to redo them basically. Um, all right, so there's use uh, RCPP, use RCPP armadillo, use RCPP eigen and use C. Uh, it's actually kind of funny that use CPP, yeah, use CPP isn't, or use CPP 11 isn't in this list because it's all the same kind of thing of set up all the stuff if you have to, if you want to do um, C++ or C development within your package. Um, again, those are their own whole uh, deeper uh, discussion, but the infrastructure is there if you ever need to do that. Um, <laughs> and yes, in the chat, uh, Rebecca asked if there are target slash or targets slash make users here. And Arthur says he'd like to become one. That is where I am as well. I've never, I, I'm sure targets is going to be kind of like package down where I'm like, oh, I've got to find some time to devote to learn this. And then I will find the time to devote to learn it and be like, oh, I like would have saved hours and hours if I had just taken the time to do that. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I heard there's a before targets and after targets life. So uh, there's a, a schedule for there to be an intro to that in a few weeks in the um, RWTF book club. Um, it's not really part of the book, but they kind of touched on things that were related to targets. And so we're going to do a little bit of a thing over there. Um, we also might end up doing that in this club or merge for that one week or something. Um, Cause that is something that is, I just, I need to get the bandaid ripped off of, okay, how does it work though? Like what are the basics? Um, so, all right. Uh, the next thing use at news MD. Um, this one is, uh, you know, it just, it sets up a news file that you can use to tell people what has changed in your package. And it does, um, uh it that or this function doesn't do anything other than that really it like oh it creates the file opens it for editing but once that file is there there are other use this file or functions that interact with that news uh dot md um and we'll talk about those as we get to them this one uh isn't in the use tidy package and it's not in my equivalent of it yet I don't know for sure if I might add it eventually because you don't really need news until you're, you have a version one, like uh, the news before version one is I created this package and did all the stuff that's in this package. Um, and when I say version one, it's, you know, first published version, whatever version number you give it. And so actually part of the deploy to CRAN process um, within uh Another thing that we're going to look at in a second uh, is create, you know, call this if you don't already have uh, the file. So it's create that file when you submit it to CRAN and don't create it before that. Uh -huh. um, use package doc. Um, oh, okay, right. Yeah, we looked at this before. This is, there's this. Um, this will create this uh, package name hyphen package dot r file, and by default it would it has ignore all of that, Oops. so it would have that when you first create it. Um, and the purpose for that, as it says um, here, is it lets you do um, this. Oops, there we go. Which just creates this um, little help function or help file, help page about your package. That's the main purpose of this. And then it also gives you a place to throw a bunch of import froms uh, to get various checks to stop complaining. Um, because I had, um, I can't remember how I ended up setting this up. No, I ended up moving use this to imports, it really should be in depends in this uh, partic particular package because this package doesn't make any sense if you don't have you use this, but 
Um, that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so this function, use package doc, it creates that package doc. Um, it is called from, uh, like if you do the use import from, which I, uh, we talked about a little bit before, it creates this and then puts the imports within it. Um, yeah, so that's that's that. All right. Uh, use Roxygen MD. So uh, there's this thing within the description of a package. Um, this. So there's the Roxygen field that has markdown equals true. Um, by default, now when you like create a new package that is set as true. But on old packages, it wasn't because Roxygen didn't have the ability to use Markdown. And so um, it can break documentation in some old packages if you set this to true. And so it's a whole thing. Um, and then, and yeah, there's a whole separate package that is just for updating old documentation to use this Markdown format. Um, I started writing packages Actually, I'm not sure if this didn't exist when I started writing, but it wasn't um, advertised. And so like the old version of the R packages book, uh, it was written before you could use Markdown within Roxygen. And so uh, this all, this stuff makes life a lot easier when you're documenting. If you want to refer to another package, it like sets up the linking uh, much more cleanly and easily. And so that's what that's about. This is one of those functions that you probably will never need to call because it just is by default now. That is how things work. Um, we looked at uh, uh, within the my cookies package. Um, I can really remember the link to offhand. There we go. And actually, I guess look at it on the source version that there are these readme. Uh, badges. So I've got lifecycle experimental. I've got a CRAN badge, CodeGov badge, our command check, CMD check, passing badge. Um, that was somewhere in here. Um, this is the set of functions that set those up. So there's use badge. And you just give it a name, a link, and um, a source. That is like the core that all these are based on. Just use CRAN badge. Use bioc badge for bioconductor, use lifecycle badge, and you tell it a stage. Uh, use binder badge. Binder is a um, uh, like site for, let's look here, um, for your uh, repository to be launched in an executable environment with this mybinder.org. So that would like tell people how to do that. Um, there's RS cloud badge for uh, if your repository can be launched in our Studio Cloud project. And so, um, you know, you can use those to set those up. Use badge is called by um, a lot of the other things within use this. Like when you set up, um, you know, I didn't create this uh, RCMD check uh, badge. It's created by uh, use um, workflow that we're going to look at in a minute. So other things call use badge as part of the uh, use this setup. It's one of those that I could imagine, um, I don't know, I could imagine us having something book club related that we set up as a badge or um, different things like that. Um, yeah, so uh, what did the badge or what do the life cycle stages mean? So, um, do they have the link? We'll talk more about that in a minute because there's the two types of life cycle. There's the package life cycle and the function life cycle. And the package life cycle, so the levels are just experimental, stable, superseded, or deprecated. For, for a package, mostly experimental or stable um, is all that's going to be relevant. And um, the rough rule of thumb is if it's tagged as experimental, that means that it's still uh, being sorted out. The, the functions could 
break. Um, like the commands, uh, or the arguments to functions could change. The order of arguments could change. Uh, the names of functions could change. And so, um, like the version number is super important to pay attention to if you're working with an experimental package versus uh, they've started to release the 1.0 versions of tidyverse packages where they say, you know, the promise is, okay, now this is the package. We might add to it, but we're not going to break these functions. We're not going to change the names. We're not going to change the argument order. Once it's 1.0, that is how that function will work. Um, and so I like I don't have any package yet that I call stable by those rules. Um, but yeah, that's the idea. And then superseded, I guess, you know, like ggplot would be a superseded package that ggplot2 superseded it. Um, and then deprecated, I don't think I've ever seen on a package. Um, Reshape2 maybe in favor uh, of tidyr? I still think that would be probably superseded because deprecated would imply um, like you can expect this to be removed from CRAN. Um, I was just trying to think like we have um, uh, my former coworker and I wrote Arbert as a R wrapper for the BERT language model. Um, and then, and that was wrapping um, Python code Okay, it's listed as retired. So uh, it's not a stage that they list, but yes, uh, I think that's probably deprecated. So I, I like I like I said, I've never seen a like deprecated tends to be more of a function level thing. But I was going to say the Arbert package, we wrote it, it wraps Python code, and then Torch came out, and we uh, rewrote we wrote Torch transformers as a way to do it with Torch, which is native. R, well, it's R calling C code and it's just much more pleasant to work with. Um, yeah, lifecycle retired. Huh. Um, that feels like it should be superseded. It's weird that he called that. Um, interesting. And yeah, it's just a link to the SVG versus I think if you do um, the cookies one, yeah. So the real lifecycle ones link to what they mean. Um, and yeah, they no longer use these uh, questioning and maturing stages and like retired isn't listed at all, so. Someone went rogue with a badge. <laughs> yeah. My guess is that, um, you know, if you look through the history, this probably predates the lifecycle package and they were still working out what they wanted to call things. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, we will have a little bit more on life cycles uh, in a moment here, um, assuming we make it, <laughs> we might not make it to it. So uh, next up, there's this continuous integration setup in badges and the only, actually this calls out that it has lifecycle deprecated and that is the um, function level uh, life cycles that you don't need, or they don't recommend using any of these anymore because GitHub actions are way easier to work with and they've got things set up for that. So just use GitHub actions. So that's all I'm gonna say about these is there are these old things that, um, you might see things using, but you don't really need to anymore. And I guess the asterisk on that is Travis had something uh, like they changed their policies or there was something that I don't remember the details, but it has a cloud over it in my mind of it's not just GitHub Actions is easier. It's people are recommended not to use Travis from what I recommend or remember. I don't want to say that too strongly because I don't remember details, uh, but that is something to, to keep in mind. All right, um, and then so instead, you should use GitHub Actions. These uh, functions are great because uh, you can tell it, like there's the general one, actually let's get the list of, um, so you use GitHub Actions, 
sets up some some basics um and it yeah it just calls use github action check release so um i think that i don't know why they have both but we'll talk about the other one in a sec uh there's a function that was uh that just adds a badge um it's used within other things so you shouldn't need that one um github use github action it this is really cool because i actually it, i didn't know about this for a long time that there's this um this let's see nope not there um our lib actions um examples there's this list of all these different things that are actions that they have uh set up and they, they tell you how to um like how to configure them and then this is if we go up to the arguments of it uh that you can just by name tell it which one they do you can give it some other arguments if you need to but the name pretty much does it and you'll set up that action um and you know I probably most often actually want to say open equals true, but that it sets it up and then open, you can open it and customize it however you need, depending on which one it is. I assume that all the rest of these are probably calling this one uh, under the hood. Um, and then there's use GitHub action check release, uh, which is the versus the um, just the latest current released version of R on a current distribution of Linux versus standard, which does um, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows on the latest release and on the next upcoming release. Um, this is the one action that you should use if you have a package that you want to eventually put on CRAN. Um, this is one that uh, in the use tidy or create tidy package, they go a little bit beyond this because they go to um, like, they go back five versions of uh, R or something, five minor versions, I think, something like that. Um, or actually, whatever, they go back uh, quite a ways in, in the history of R. Um, you don't need to do that for a normal package, but if your package has been a long, around for a long time, you might want to start uh, supporting the older versions. Um, this one lets you set up these slash document and slash style commands that if you just put a comment on a pull request that has these, it'll run uh, the documentation or it'll style the package. Um, I like, like I have these set up and then I always forget that they're set up and I'll do it locally. And oh yeah, right. You can just do it on um, when someone else has it set up. I actually should set up something equivalent to this um, to add, Oh, I'm going to do that. Um, there's the use package command. That is the thing that people screw up on book clubs where they don't set, they don't put a package into the description. And um, I think I'm going to set up an equivalent to this where I can just do that in a comment on a pull request and it'll fix it instead of me having to like edit the description myself. So um, anyway, so these are nice and uh, just had an idea based on those. Um, and then there are some other ones that we will, uh, look at, uh, or we probably won't get to, but there's, um, you GitHub file and you use tidy GitHub actions are their own help pages. So we'll go over to those in a little bit. Um, I don't need that anymore. All right. Use package down. Um, we briefly talked about it. I'm not going to go into, um, a lot more detail other than, oh, the P that's, that's what this is open for is. There is a function use package down Travis that's deprecated that you don't need that anymore. So use just use package down GitHub pages. It is really clean and nice, and we've looked at it before. Um, it's really useful. Uh, use GitHub links um, updates the uh, description with your GitHub info. Um, it's like it's one of those that gets called by other things, but it's nice if you have changed some things about the package, you can call it and you'll fix the description. Uh, that's all that's for. All right, so use lifecycle badges and I'm gonna try to wrap up as much of this as I can in the little or without going too far over. Um, these are what you use 
for uh, functions. And so you can, uh, if you call use lifecycle, it sets everything up for you to use function leveled life cycles, um, which means that you have to depend on the lifecycle package and, it, and it'll like add the little badges or it adds the ability to add the badges to your functions. And then um, you can just uh, run deprecated uh, within a function. This is one of those that you need to like, and again, at some point we'll go through the lifecycle documentation that it's this whole separate package. Um, and it tells you how to use it, which is useful. Um, and then you can use, uh, sorry, and then it points out that use lifecycle badge and use lifecycle are separate. Like there's the package level versus the uh, function level. The purpose for this, again, is almost purely if you deprecate a function, this has infrastructure in place to help you deal with that. Um, that's basically what this is for. Any other questions on that other than, you know, there's a whole other package to go into. All right. Uh, use GitHub release. So this one um, is super useful. So what this will do, uh, uh, oh, sorry, this isn't actually the one I was thinking of, but so what this one will do is after you release, or when you go through the packet, yeah, the process of rele releasing or submitting a package to CRAN, they can, um, part of that cat is captured in this CRAN submission or CRAN, I think it's CRAN submission um, file. And then once you get the email from CRAN saying that it's been accepted, you run this use GitHub release and it uh, uses that the info in that file to create an official release within your GitHub um, repository and with the version number and when it was submitted and all that info like built into it. Um, I guess real quick. Um, <laughs> Uh, if we go to the, oops, I actually wanted the, the other one. Um, my submissions on CRAN, and when I remembered to call these, are set up with these releases, and it tells you like what was in the news at that release, and it has the source code um, there. So if you need to download a previous version, you can do that. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's that. Um, this is the one that I was thinking of use release issue. It creates this bulleted list of all the things you need to do when you're submitting to CRAN. Now it's aimed at, um, the tidyverse. And so like one of the bullets is write blog post. And then a later bullet is like publish blog post, um, which may or may not be something you actually want to do, but I, I, pretty religiously use this. Um, I love that they talk in this help that it tells you how to use this. Um, there's this release bullets uh, function that isn't exported and it's not documented, but you could use it if you want to do your own thing. So um, I'm probably going to do that at some point is make my own version of this use release issue. But it just, it's really helpful to remind you um, what you need to keep track of while you're going through a release. And a thing that's really super helpful about it, um, I can go ahead and call it, I can always just cut, close the issue. But um, as long as you keep use this updated, uh, actually, I don't wanna go through this. I don't wanna have to deal with the whole thing, but it, it creates this issue um, and it's like all the latest things. So there was a, a thing where, um, something about something changed in like the CRAN rules about how redirects should work. And so they added a bullet for how to deal with that. Or um, there was, uh, I don't know, there were different um, things where URLs were breaking. And so they added, they add bullets or they change bullets or they re remove bullets based on the actual current policies of how to release a package. And so it helps you kind of keep track of what's happening. All right, I'm gonna try to finish because we just have a um, couple more to go. Use RevDep. There is this um, RevDep package that uh, helps you find 
um, packages that are on CRAN that depend on your package. Um, something I find just, I don't know, kind of fascinating is there's a policy now on the Tidyverse team that when they make a breaking change in a package, they use this use RevDep and then they go submit pull requests to any packages that come up as breaking because of their changes. And so like they, they'll fix the other packages uh, instead of like, it, you know, the more standard thing and what they used to do would be they notify the people, hey, we made this change, update your package to deal with this change. And now they're like, no, we, they actually make the change and, um, you know, submit it so that they don't have to, uh, both so they don't have to wait for other people, but so other people don't get particularly inconvenienced because they changed something. So, um, and yeah, it just generates this report that you can use in your CRAN submission to say, you know, I checked out these things. Um, use version, use dev version. These are just simple functions that um, you can tell it which piece, major, minor, patch, or dev, and it'll just update your version number in your description. It's not that um, funky, but the other thing it does is in your news, it adds a new heading for that version number uh, for you to put bullets underneath. Um, it's just helpful that it kind of keeps track of everything for you. And then use dev version is just a wrapper around that that just does the 9,000 in the dev version. Uh, which is the standard for this is what I'm working on right now. Um, all right, any questions there? Okay. Uh, um, oh, so yeah, where did I? Uh, so there's um, all these tidy, use tidy uh, functions. We went through the create tidy package um, and some of the things in here, one of the things that we um, didn't go into is there's the use tidy eval, which again, that loads the um, pieces of um, uh, uh, Arlang. Like Ar Arlang, yes, that you need in order to use tidy eval. And so that's kind of a separate thing. This one is actually one that, you know, anytime you need to do that, just call this function and it deals with that. And then the other one that we hadn't dealt with is use tidy style, um, oops, which uh, is, uh, where are you? Um, oh yeah, sets up things to use the, the tidy, the, the styler package using the tidyverse style guide. Um, and you know they call it out separately because it overwrites files. It'll change the way that your files are formatted. Um, Definitely, I highly, highly recommend do this once yourself <laughs> before you set up the rule of doing it automatically, because if you do it yourself, it'll tell you what changed and you can kind of look through and see, oh, no, I don't want it to do that. Um, but for the most part, it's it just like uh, changes the way th lines are reflowed or that there's always a space after if or things like that. Um, but I. I it's helpful to do that because then you don't have to like um, fight against anybody. If you're working with a collaborator, it's like, no, this is the style we're going to use. And so uh, if you happen to prefer to use a different number of spaces in your indents, whatever, the package will kind of automatically correct itself to the style that we have it set to use. Um, just a couple more quick ones. There are, um, we, we ran this as part of the use tidy uh, or create tidy package last week. Um, but there are our GitHub labels on issues. And so they have this set that is use tidy GitHub labels is what was called in what we were looking at last week, but it's broken down into separate functions where you can tell it um, what labels you want to use. Uh, tidy labels is a, um, it just returns a list of labels, tidy labels rename and tidy labels colors, or sorry. Uh, yeah, actually all of these are just like data structures to uh, all, all four of these are just data structures that are used in use tidy GitHub labels. And so you can call those to see um, what are the tidy labels. So I'll just real quick look at that. Um, that 
these are the you know named list or named vector, I guess, of the different uh, labels that they use. Um, again, this is one that I, I'm like, I don't really see a reason not to do that. They have reasons for using those labels and they seem to be pretty good. Oh, if you do do that, um, I can't remember if I ever fixed this. Uh, go there again. Um, that, uh, let's see, if we go to, yeah, issues and new issue um, and labels. Uh, okay, yes. So they create one that is um, a tidy, uh, where is it? Yeah, tidy dev day. I don't want that one because I'm not going to be, uh, you know, cookies isn't going to be edited at a tidyverse developer day. Um, but that's uh, other than that, I don't know. I don't see any reason not to use their labels. John, do you uh, know of any mechanism yeah. of like storing your preferred set of labels locally to a <laughs> user? I don't. Um, other than like set up your own version of these and then run this with your own set. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which again, this will probably be something that I add to my end. This uh, will be almost exactly the same thing, just cutting out the tidyverse dev day thing. Um, oh, and then, so one that's, uh, this isn't going to be interesting at all, but you know, if I run use tidy thanks on this, oh, look, it's got just one person who has contributed, um, but they have uh, 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 they have this function that they use in their blog posts that it goes through the GitHub repo and looks for anyone who has like created or I think even commented on an issue or a pull request since the last release um, by default, or you can give it a specific date range. And so if you see like they just released TidyR, uh, whatever version it was, and the blog post on that at the bottom lists everyone who contributed, the way they do that is this use tidy thanks. Um, Again, it's it's one of those that it's called out as a tidyverse convention that, oh, you probably don't need this, but um, it's really nice to be able to see, okay, who has worked on or you know done anything with my package uh, since the first or the last version. Um, and I think, yeah, so that is all of the functions that I planned to go through. Um, we are a bit over, but I can, answer any questions for at least the next uh, few minutes. I didn't actually go through my package, so I guess I can do that if people want to stick around. Um, and Arthur pointed out that uh, GT has some useful labels. So yes, you know, you can set up your own, uh, like, uh, there are different, like, I don't know, there's a, a balance between too many and, um, you know, it, useful. Um, I started adding some labels on the Tidy Tuesday repository because we have, I don't know, like 400 submitted data sets, but most of them aren't uh, enough information to really use. And so I'm trying to sort out um, what will it take to actually use those data sets. Um, and so we've started creating some labels around that. Um, but yeah. It's, it is interesting because the, the whole point of them is, uh, you know, you could imagine using these to create searches of, um, okay, I want an easy bug to fix, but I've got a lot of time. So I'll take a high effort, easy one, um, or I want to focus on these different things or things like that. So, um, yeah. John, That's do cool. you know of any, um, um, Maybe kind of two-part question, which we can carry on to, to, to Slack. Is yeah. um, have you used GitHub projects? I guess the new projects much. And if uh, you know, maybe kind of regardless of the answer, um, you know, it's like, do you happen to know if there any there's any kind of R bridge to like setting setting that up? I've, I've not I've not used it yet, so I, maybe it's just a push button, you know, feature that you you have at yeah. your disposal. So barely and no, <laughs> I don't know. So I, I, um, I always use Jira at work, um, which is the same kind of idea. 
Yeah. Uh, but I have been trying to um, start using uh, the projects within um, GitHub because why not? It's all there and then you can keep track of everything. Um, the general idea is, uh, I mean, the, the main feature of it uh, is it makes a board. Let's see, do they have one here? Nope. It lets you have like um, a to-do list with columns basically. And I think there are some other things you can do with projects, but that's the, the main thing. Um, that is something that I would uh, like to learn more about, but I have not yet. Um, yeah. Same boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so I, I do want to go through and see if there's anything that I forgot to talk about and just show like what I did in my create package. Um, if you need to hop off, you know, this will be on the recording. Um, and feel free to interrupt if you have any questions about this. Um, so again, like we started to look at this last week that um, there's this use tidy package or create tidy package rather that uh, has a set of things it does, almost all of which were useful, but some of them were not and, and or that they were like close to useful and had little tweaks. Um, and I have certain things that are my own rules and other people would have other things that are, you know, your own rules of what, how you want things to work. And so I created mine. It's very specific to me, but the um, idea is it's not that hard to create your own. Uh, although there were some little tricks in here and we'll go through those. Um, so again, this is like built to replace the use this create package. Um, I did that on purpose that within my, um, or, my our profile, I um, I query dev tools, which also loads use this, and then after that I do and this, and so that means that anything that I have defined in and this will replace uh, use this. Um, I could also there's the conflicted package that'll explicitly tell it tell R which version to use, um, but whatever I just do it by order here, and then so the idea is. If you use and this create package, it does some stuff and calls use this create package as part of the process. Um, I you know I could have named it create John package or something, but I I wanted to not have to think, and so it overrides the main create package function. Um, the main one you have you know a path and some fields and you know all these different. Um, settings. And I'm like, nope, I always just want to base it on the package name and then be able to fill in some um, specifics uh, if I want to while I'm setting it up. And then the other thing that I have is I've been creating all, all my stuff under r for ds um, just so that it isn't just me who has access to it. Uh, you know, if it's a package or whatever, I want there to be a group of people who, who kind of own it in case there's ever a problem. Um, and all right, and yeah, go ahead and hop off if you need to. People are hopping off, no problem. All right, so there's that's that. That's a you know special setting that I have. And it's just a boolean it's true by default, but occasionally, like and this I have is just me because it's not uh, a general use package. Um, one thing is, you know, there's this use this dester, and so I use that to put my package under that. I could have hard coded it as well, but that way, if I ever change my mind about where to create packages, I just create or I just change that in my R profile, and then um, the package will get created under there. Uh, I call glue on the title and description, and the reason for that is I can do things like this, where uh, the description depends on the value of package name. Um, I actually have uh, a planned edit that or. I thought about an edit that I haven't made yet because I don't have a use case, but I could put dots here where I could just send more arguments in purely for these. I can't think of a reason why I would want to create a, a dynamic package like that, but if I do, I could uh, set that up. And so these are just set up to um, parse the arguments. If you haven't used glue, um, it will replace anything that's in curly braces like that, that is a variable within the environment where it's being executed. And so um, that's what's happening here. And then I create the package and I, I do this call. Um, 
so that within the description, the title and description get set up with those. The reason I do that is I also use those later in the um, read me, and I can't remember if there's anywhere else, but that way they were kind of just set up to be used uh, in various places. I use that local project function. So it is, um, you know, like I say here, that then that uh, project that I just created is the active project until I escape from this function. Um, that way I could call it from one function or one project and have it do things in a different project. Um, <laughs> the organization is null by default, but, or it's null unless I say that it's R for DS. It's basically what's happening here. Um, and those are used in different functions that I'm going to be calling here. And so the GitHub root is a separate thing of just on the path. Is it John the Geek or is it R for DS? Again, this is a thing that's hard coded for me that someone would want, need to change if it were for themselves. Um, and then the GitHub short URL is just the GitHub root and the package name with a slash. Um, I needed these various variables for different things I'm going to call. So for example, or so then I set up this package data. Um, this is going to be used in this use template call. So we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, there's the uh, you know package. Uh, uh, these are variables that are in use this templates. So there's a variable that's packaged with a capital P. And so I use that name and it's the name of the package. Um, GitHub spec is uh, what they use and use this for what I called GitHub short URL. And it made more sense to me to be GH short URL. So whatever I renamed the variable there, basically, I use the description, I use the GitHub root in a place or two. Um, and uh, for another, for one of the, for the um, readme.rmd needs to know whether RMD is true. And so I set that to true. And so then I'm using this use template directly rather than use readme RMD um, because I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to make my own version of that readme RMD. The use this one is really generic. Um, and, oh, that was the other thing is use this one like depend or depends on the order that you call things of what it's going to put in there, whether it's going to put your contributor code of conduct, things like that. So I just created my own template. Um, and so if we go into and this, yeah, they're in inst templates. I have this package readme. Um, and so it sets everything up where it'll have the baggage, badges section. It has the how to install this package and it has the code of conduct. Um, that was my way of dealing with like the order that you call things in matter. And some of them, like, I got in a little bit of a loop and I was like, oh, never mind. I'll just create my own template and then I don't have to deal with it. It also doesn't create like all the extra stuff that's in a readme by default with use this where it's got, you know, you should put your examples here and things like that. Um, I say instead usage, add usage information and examples here. So that's how I set up my default. Still just use test that, use MIT license, um, which actually I don't, think to use MIT license. Yeah, don't really, like I have kind of repeated that because I have that set as my uh, default description field, but also let's get rid of that. Um, this will uh, set up the file that has um, or both of these files actually that sets it up with the and this authors as the um, copyright holders, which is what they recommend doing. So, okay. Um, and I have this oops, use tidy description call, and I think I have a couple more of these, or at least one more of these in here. Yeah, um, because that function like fixes the order of things or repairs the order. Um, I'm not sure if I need both calls to that anymore. I'll have to check that later. Um, I do the use package doc, which creates that um, that placeholder file. Um, and then I say some things in the UI as I go that, okay, this is the section where I'm going to be doing get stuff and um, like respond, uh, it, it tell me how to respond. I think I can get rid of the but don't restart part because since it's being called 
non-interactively, it doesn't ask me to restart, but um, whatever. And then the, we get to my first other function that I have is protect readme. So um, get or use this has this function use pre commit hook. Um, and you tell it the hook you want. And it um, sets up these things that if you're going to commit, so if I go to um, hooks, so it creates this directory within your .git, and it creates this one file called pre-commit. And this is what um, git checks when you're going to click commit. Um, so I can show you, I guess it'll be easier to just show you what this means by going to readme rmd. Um, and if I say, oh, uh, you know, do some cool things, save, and I say commit, and I go to that readme rmd, say edit uh, rmd without remitting, and I hit commit, it says, nope, can't do that. Um, oh, actually, that's funny. I have an error. I have to fix my pre-commit hook. Um, <laughs> so I have a thing to fix there that somehow that got broken. Um, Don, do you have to um, do you have to use like a, a bash for 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 this, or could you use kind of like a PowerShell or something like that for for Windows? Um, you could but actually i'm not i'm i'm not certain and um git itself is using git bash on windows so it i just do use bash i don't know if you could use um any I, like you can set that so it could be different um, I have had this working, so I'll need to come back and fi figure out why it's breaking now. But the idea of this is that I have um, I have this, or this is the hook for protecting the README, where it won't render or it won't let you commit if you only change the README RMD. You have to also um, render the Markdown version, and then I have this use pre-commit hook function that checks if the hook already exists, uh, reads it checks if the thing that you want to add is already there. And if it's already there, it doesn't do anything. Um, and if it is already there, it add, or if it's not already there, it adds your thing to the existing hook um, and then saves it. Um, and that's where somewhere along the lines, I screwed up and like left out a line or something. Um, but that way I can like add more things to it without breaking it um, because there's the, um, well, I'll show you why in just a moment. So if we go, oops, we go back up to the main file. Um, that was the protect readme. And in a moment, we're going to call another protect function. So the idea there, though, is I've set this thing up to just, um, it won't let me screw up the readme. Um, then I do the use GitHub and I tell myself to say yes, so I don't have to remember uh what i have to click in the button or in the things um and i set up a lifecycle experimental because it's brand new so it can't be stable yet um i use the cran badge and i set up this cran comments um file which is where you log information about the submission um and then i do a bunch of use tidy github stuff so i create the github directory i um, at, you know, set up the ignores that they do in there. And then I, again, have my own slightly tweaked version of this contributing um, template, which is, uh, which I save into that GitHub folder. And it's just, it um, tells people, um, I think I, you know, I reference uh, R4DS in here, I think, let's see. Oh, no, I don't, but I cut out the section that is, the things that are really specific to uh, the tidyverse. Um, I say how I use the styles and I say uh, how the code of conduct works. So, um, so I use that template and set it all up for 
uh, for this for whatever package I'm creating. Um, I set up the issue template folder, and um, again, I have one that I based on the their template, but I edited it for my own um, purposes. And I think yeah, this one does uh, tell you to go to uh, the RPDS Slack or uh, our Studio Community Stack Overflow. Um, that's basically all that's there. Uh, and then also support, which is in GitHub support.md, tells you, you know, like this talks a lot more about R4DS. Um, and it tells you, um, Tidyverse says, you know, we, we tend to work on packages one at a time. And so it might be months before you hear anything. Um, I don't say that because generally, if I get an issue, I'll look at it right away. But I tell you what's going to happen, basically. Uh, use the code of con conduct with me as the contact. Um, set up all the actions of coverage, standard checks, the PR commands. Um, and then I also do the package down and test coverage uh, actions. Um, then I do the Tidy GitHub hub labels, which I need to, uh, you know, date these to my own list. Um, and I do the use package on GitHub pages, um, which will, in addition to rendering, so this action, like checks that the package down will, will render. This action, like actually deploys package down to GitHub pages. Um, I run use tidy description again and document and build the readme um, just to make sure everything is ready to go. And then I do, uh, oh, and then I uh, set up GitHub. And so I also check everything in and commit it and push it to GitHub because why not? I set it up, so I probably want it there. Uh, and then I, after I do that, I set it where you can't um, commit things directly to main. Now, again, it's not working right now, but the idea is it should give me an error if I try to commit to the main branch, um, because if you commit to the main branch that uh, like breaks some things. And so I just said, learned how to set it where you can't do that. Uh, put in some blank lines and then um, warn you that your GitHub actions are gonna fail because it's trying to do test cases or it's trying to run your tests and your tests will fail because you don't have any tests. Um, and then I open the project and that is the end of the, uh, the whole process. Um, yeah, so that's, that's like wrapping up all the stuff that we've done and use this. Plus we haven't really looked at use template. Um, they don't say that much in it about how it works. I had to go look at, okay, but what are the templates and what do they look like um, in order to really figure out how to make my own templates. Um, but that actually wanting to do use templates template is what led me to make this a package. It had all been in my um, our profile and then uh, the templates have to come from a package. And so, or it's easiest if they come from a package. And so I made the package to have my own templates and then I could do all kinds of things. Um, and so, yes, I highly recommend stealing the idea uh, and, you know, changing it completely to match how you do things. Um, I probably, you are definitely will continue to evolve this because there are things that I do every time I create a package, or you know, you might do have things that you do every time you create a uh, new uh, project for some analysis or something. Set up your own use this to do that, um, and to create a project that is that kind of project. Once you get into the use template stuff, you can do almost anything because you can set up these files that are standard uh, types of files, like maybe. I'll add a standard um, vignette because there is uh, for package down. If you have a vignette that is named, let's see, I probably, no, I don't have that here. But if you have a vignette that's named the same as the package, that will be the getting started vignette. So I'll probably go ahead and set that up with some rules of how to do it. Um, 
things all around that. Like uh, I haven't figured out the details of all this yet, but as I do, I have a place to add them now. So, uh, but I do have to figure out why I broke or how I broke my pre-commit hook because that looks fine. It has a end of line. Um, so I don't know. Huh. <laughs> all right. You have any questions, Arthur? I think I'm good for now, John. I think this really, I was thinking about doing, my, this kind of answers my question is like, why don't people have more like a dev folders for, for their packages? But I mean, if you have something like this setup, it scratches that same itch a lot more effectively, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I like, I have created uh, one or two packages, like got the setup working um, using this and they have worked except maybe they're uh, maybe the pre-commit hooks are broken. I don't know that the the error I got implied that it's completely broken, but I've been able to check things in. So I wonder if it's just the way that it's issuing an error is broken. That might be. Anyway. Um, yeah. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing and I will see you on Slack and then next week. All right. See you around. Thanks so much. Bye. You're welcome. Bye -bye.